Hey gang, Troy Dean here and welcome to another WP Elevation live stream. I'm super, super excited about this one. We're going to be talking about two of my favorite topics, coaching and sales funnels. It's going to be epic. And uh, I, if you're watching and you can see this and we are live and it's working, please just say hi in the chat. Carmen says, hi, Simon. Hi, Carmen. It's Troy, but that's okay. Uh, you can call me Simon if you like. Uh, <laughs> Simon says, hey, hey. Cool. So, hey, it's working. So leave your name. Uh, well, actually, just tell us where you're calling from, where, where, you're, where you're watching from in the uh, comments so that we can get a bit of an understanding of who's who. And I'm going to introduce you to my good friend, Jenny Lakin. And hey, Jenny, how you doing? Hey, Troy. Excited to be here. Yes, there we are. Look at that. We're on Skype together. Woohoo! I love it. <laughs> it works. It works. It works. Yeah, it's very exciting. Thanks for doing this. Thanks for thanks for joining in. What time is it where you are? It's five p.m. Five p.m. Okay, that's reasonable. Although that's kind of like heading in towards dinner time with the kids, right? Yeah, but you know, they're all right. They've got dad. Oh, good. Excellent. <laughs> Awesome. Um, so a little bit of context, who are you and what do you do? Yeah, so I'm Jenny Lakenan and I build beautiful, highly targeted websites for life coaches primarily so they can get their mind off of their website and onto growing their business and really being an example of what's possible. Cool. How did you, how did you find yourself in the life coaching niche? You know, I found coaching first before I started my web agency. So I, I found coaching. I, I wanted to become a coach myself. And I started networking with a whole bunch of coaches to find out more about what it was like. And I just found, I just saw this problem that they had, which is that they had, you know, spent a lot of money and a lot of time on coach training and then their website and their like online marketing presence just didn't match it at all. And, and I just decided that that wasn't okay. And I was going to be the one to fix it. So, <laughs> so hang on. There's, let's just talk about the let's just talk about the thought process here. You decided that that is not okay, which I totally, yep, totally get that. Like this is a frustration. Their websites mm -hmm. should be a lot better than this. But then you make this decision that you're going to be the one to fix it. Like where does that come from? Well, I knew that I liked website development and design, and I knew enough about it to like kind of be dangerous at the time, <laughs> and so I just thought, well, let's give it a go. And were you, were <laughs> I built build, a couple of sites, but were you actively building websites before that? No. Wow. So you were just tinkering on the web. Mm -hmm. Found the coaching thing and went, hang on a second, these guys need some help and I've got some skills. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so then how does that inform some of the decisions that you make like do you then say all right I'm not doing any work for anyone else who's not a coach no no it's more that's my marketing like I market to coaches and their pain points I mean obviously I'll work with anyone who's a good fit and and who I think could benefit from my help but yeah, yeah coaches are what I market to specifically yeah cool it's a good yeah. question uh, just getting some feedback here in the chat here. Carmen says, uh, Jenny is loud. Troy is low. Okay. I'm riding the faders gang. I'm riding the faders. I'm trying to get the sound right here. Um, uh, Maury Gar says, Jenny, you rock. I'm bringing that up on the, uh, oh, there we go. Hang on. Um, Omar is here from Houston. Uh, Amy Langford is here from Dallas, Texas. Lara Johnson is here. Mary Brown is watching. Says, Hey, Jenny Lacken, and I appreciate all the value you give to us coaches uh delight is here from nebraska maureen is here from massachusetts uh corey is here i think corey is in new zealand if i'm not mistaken uh maury is here from utah paul is here from sydney andrew is here from montana cool 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 all right awesome so uh what i wanted to do was just give people a little bit of context about why we're here and why we're talking about this um i you know the online coaching space is something that I'm very passionate about. When I say online coaching, I mean coaching, but, but mainly using online to grow the business and using online to deliver the coaching. So, so through, you know, Zoom calls or through virtual summits or through, you know, email coaching or whatever it is. I love online coaching. I've been doing it for about seven years. Uh, and I think now, really because of what's happening in the world, more than ever, there's just, I mean, I've seen this huge boom in online coaching and all these people sort of seeing this opportunity. What have you seen in the circles that you move in, Jenny? Totally. That's absolutely the feeling is that 
the world needs this work now more than ever. Yeah. And, and it's our time. <laughs> yeah, right. And I think, I mean, I think partially it's because people want to feel supported and they want to feel connected. And also people have got a bit of time now because we're, I mean, in Australia we're in lockdown. I know that's, you know, pretty much the case for most of the <clears throat> developed world at the moment is that we're pretty much not allowed to leave the house unless absolutely necessary. Um, yep. So <clears throat> what would you, what, what is, what's the challenge there though? Like what's the, because it's becoming pretty competitive and I look like in my news feed when I'm online, mm -hmm. every second thing I, I see is from a coach. How do we start to navigate the fact that it's getting a bit more competitive? You know, I think it's really just making sure that your message is honed exactly to their pain points and that you have enough touch points with them to build trust and to position yourself as the person that can address their problems. And how important do you think it is to, um, you know, we always talk about niching down and you have kind of niched into the, the coaching scene. How, do, how important do you think it is that coaches get really specific about who they help? Oh, so important. I mean, that's the make or break. Like that's how you re really become that key person of influence is by niching down. And I always just tell coaches like pick, pick a niche and then go five levels deeper. <laughs> like, because that's when you're really going to hit on the gold and on the, the people that, so that your message is clear so that they can hear you. You know, it's sort of like being in a room full of crowded people, full of people that are talking loudly and you know, instead of like, if I'm on the other side of the room and you over there, you're on the other side of the room, Troy. And I say, Hey guy with brown hair, like it's not going to get your attention. Whereas if I'm like, Hey Troy, you're immediately going to turn around and be like, what, what, who's talking to me? You know? And that's what it's like to niche. Yeah. Uh, they, they call it, um, they call it dog whistle copy is the, you know, mm -hmm. The, uh, if, if you're, if you're, yeah, it's exactly that thing. If you're in a room full of people that own dogs and there's someone with an Alsatian and you call that, Hey, you with the Alsatian instantly, you're appealing to them and they know exactly who you're talking to. We've yeah. actually seen during this whole COVID thing, uh, a couple of our, and, and full transparency, Jenny is actually a member of our Mavericks club mastermind program. And we've actually seen a couple of our members in, uh, Mavericks and, and also right across WP Elevation who were really well entrenched in a niche. And of course that niche now is not operating like people who serve the travel industry. So that can be, I mean, who saw that coming? There's no way we could have known that this was, yeah. this was happening. Um, mm -hmm. that well, and that's just out. one to know to, to pivot, right? Like, that's right. yeah. And mm -hmm. that's what they're doing now. They're pivoting to, to uh, sort of try and make the most of the opportunity and doing some really innovative things um, Simon Major, one of our Mavericks members is kind of helping his health practitioners get online and, you know, live stream Pilates classes and yoga classes, which is super helpful. And it's kind of been a bit of a pivot for him, uh, just seeing those opportunities. But I think also, if you know your niche really well, you'll be able to see those opportunities when something like this happens. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you, you know, serve abroad. I mean, why I decided in 2013 that I was going to become the most helpful person on the planet for WordPress consultants. And now that's kind of broadened and become digital agencies and web agencies in general. But I'm not a business coach. I don't call myself a business coach. You know, I don't have, I don't coach accountants or lawyers or plumbers or, you know, other service providers. I, I specialize in web developers and web designers and digital agencies. And that's my niche. And I know them really well. And so I can help them, you know, when they, when things like this happen. Uh, what's, what's the opportunity? What would you say to someone who, who's really wanting to get into coaching, but doesn't really know where to start? Oh, that's such a good question. What do you think, Troy? <laughs> <laughs> I have to think about it for a minute. <laughs> uh, well, so my advice would be my, I know it's funny. I was talking to someone about this recently. My advice would be, uh, find out. Um, sorry, I'm just getting a bit of feedback here from people that are saying that you're super loud and they can't hear me. Really? Okay. Uh, I, my mic is cranked here and all right. Um, well, we'll just, just keep giving me feedback here, guys. I'm just adjusting sliders here as we speak. So just keep giving me feedback. If you can hear me, if, um, uh, if Jenny's too loud, I've just pulled Skype down a little bit and I've just turned my microphone up a little bit. So just keep giving me feedback in the comments here, gang. 
Um, my advice would be work out who you want to serve. Monte Cristo says levels are perfect. Awesome. Uh, work out who you want to serve and get on the phone and start talking to them and ask them what their biggest challenges are and how you can help them. And, uh, you know, don't, don't try and – one, one of the mistakes I see people making is that, is that they try and coach before they're ready to coach and they try and kind of bluff their way through it. I think it's really important to understand your customer, understand your audience really well, understand what their, what their pain points are and actually have a solution to help them. It doesn't mean that you have to know everything. You just need to be experienced enough and see success working elsewhere and be able to develop some kind of framework to allow people to model that and then go and take action. One of the Also one of the big problems I see is coaches try and just kind of prescribe or teach all the time. And I don't actually think that's as helpful as allowing people to discover things for themselves because if they discover things for themselves, they're more likely to take action on those discoveries. Whereas if you just tell them what to do, they probably won't do it. And even if they do and it doesn't work, they'll just come back and say, well, I tried that and it didn't work. What else you got? So Right. Yeah. Well, and in the community of coaches that I've been really in in the last year or so, they really do coach more on the thoughts. They don't really coach on the actions. Like they don't really tell the, tell their clients what to do as much as they do just try to uncover the thoughts behind what they're currently, what the client is currently acting on and doing and just examine that. Like, do you like that? Is that really serving you? If it's not, maybe let's, you know, examine that a little bit more. So I think they do a good job there, but I, I agree with your point on just, let's just like get some clients on the phone. Let's get some clients on zoom. Like, let's just figure out what their pain points are. One thing that I try to kind of recommend to, to my clients is, you know, sometimes I get coaches that come to me straight out of coach training, or maybe they're already, they're like still in coach training and they want to build out like their whole website strategy and all the things. And I just kind of have to be, which seems sort of counterintuitive because I build websites for a living, but I'm off. Sometimes I'm just like, you know, you might just get like five or eight or 10 clients, even just free ones under your belt. That's in this niche that you want to serve. That way, you know, that what you're, well, for one, you validated your niche, you know, people want to pay for your solution or they want coaching on it. And your content is just so much easier to create because you know, their pain points so much better. Yeah. hundred percent. Um, and so <clears throat> let's just pivot a little bit and talk about the, the sales and marketing side of being a coach. We've, we've been talking a lot about this, um, about automating a sales and marketing process. Let's just talk about the mistakes that you see coaches making, <clears throat> excuse me, in trying to get, in trying to grow their client base. Oh yeah, that's really interesting. I, I heard a coach the other day complaining about um, her no-show. She was just having a bunch of no-shows for like mini sessions or, or free coaching sessions, initial sessions. And and we, we had a conversation. She was like, oh, well, I'm running an ad to my, you know, my, my landing page with a video. And then that leads to my scheduler. And like the only touch point that they were having with her was that one video. And then she expect them to schedule and like show up to this call. So the mistake that I, that I see sometimes is like kind of jumping the gun too quickly in their marketing and not giving people enough time to build trust with them before they, they try to close the sale before they try to, you know, sell them on coaching. Yeah, because I mean, let's face it, coaching is usually a, a, you know, high ticket thing. It's not, we're not, you know, usually coaching is a serious investment for the person who's being coached, right? And so if, if mm -hmm. you're going to make that investment in someone, you need to trust that they are capable of helping you transform whatever the transformation is, whether it's losing weight, whether it's improving your business, whether it's setting life mm -hmm. goals, <clears throat> achieving career goals, whatever it is. So you need to trust that, that they have a framework and the ability to help you achieve that transformation. And trust, what I've learned over the years is that trust is built through consistency of behavior. Mm -hmm. So imagine you go out with your friends on a regular basis. <clears throat> Excuse me. Imagine you're going out with your friends on a regular basis and, you know, you kind of know how those friends behave. Of course, we're not going out with our friends at the moment. We're staying home. But when we do go out with our friends, you know how those friends behave and you kind of know what to expect in a group dynamic. Well, if one of your friends all of a sudden, like, couple of weeks in a row just absolutely gets blind drunk and like in a really disturbing way and it's out of character for them that's inconsistent with what you expect from them so you start to wonder what's going on for them 
you know, what's going on in their life that means that they're, they're doing this. And so what happens is you start to mistrust their behavior because it's inconsistent. Whereas if we generally behave in character and, you know, in line with our values and with what people expect, then you can trust what you're going to get from that person. And that's what friendships and relationships are built on. And so that what you're talking about is this <clears throat> kind of crafting these multiple touch points with someone before you get on a call with them so that by the time you're interacting with them, they already trust you and they're already pre-framed to kind of see you as the authority rather than just going in for the kill too early, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And really giving them time to see that before and after, like, what am I, what are my problems now before I work with this coach and what, and then painting the picture of this is what life can be like after I work with them. And like that, that solution and that result is really what I want. Yeah. Uh, Sherry Price says, <clears throat> yes, Jenny built me a beautiful website. Beautiful is in all caps. Awesome. Um, so I think we should dive in a little bit and talk about uh, the mechanics behind what we're talking about. Uh, I call it a high ticket sales funnel. This is the, really the way for any, it works for any service provider, but it just works really well with coaches. I've just seen this work really well. It yeah. works so well. It works so well. <laughs> And so um, I think we should unpack what a high ticket sales funnel actually is. Uh, you and I have had this conversation before that really what it is, is it's a process to automate and scale your sales and marketing. Um, mm -hmm. Can you just kind of give me your take on and maybe just unpack the bullet points of what, what a high ticket sales funnel is exactly? Yeah, like the steps of it or what is yeah. that what you're talking about? Yeah, for sure. And then, and then we're yeah. going to dive in and actually have a look at a couple. Okay. Yeah. So the crux of it is you want to capture their email, right? Like that's what a lot of online marketing starts with. So you, you get them on a landing page where you capture their email and then you provide them with a, a cornerstone content video where you're, it's like this really um, effective sales script where you teach them one thing like really in depth. And then you explain how that one thing is just kind of an overall piece of the puzzle of all of your coaching. And then you explain, this is why you should get on the phone with me. And you call them to action to apply for a call and they click a button and they get to an application. And the application is very strategic and asking them before and after type questions. So like, what is your life like now? Why is now the time to make this change, whatever it is, weight or, or business or whatever? And then, you know, why am I the one to help you? You can also ask questions like, are you committed to, to a financial investment in this? And often we'll use that to like automate filtering people in and out, which is really helpful and saves a lot of time for my clients. And then after the application, if they qualify, they get sent to your booking page where they can schedule a call with you and a free session. And then after they schedule a call, which this is, a, this is kind of a fun part, they're automatically sent a uh, homework. And the homework is usually like a video and then a PDF or some kind of worksheet that they have to do before they get on the call. And you tell them, hey, if you don't do this before you get on the call, we're going to have to reschedule. And man, I have clients that they're like, people show up to the call and they like hold up their homework. They're like, look, I did my homework. You know, I'm so ready. And it's just, it's just all of those touch points really help to build trust and authority and, and yeah, just the consistency of, of behavior and value, like you said. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. I love it. Um, Did I miss anything? <laughs> no, 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 I think it's good. And I think the homework piece is something that, uh, I mean, you know, so if, again, full transparency, we cover a lot of this in a course called high ticket sales funnels, which Jenny went through and, uh, and, you know, is now applying to her coaching clients. And when I started doing this, you know, hundred years ago, uh, I wasn't doing, I was just doing the kind of look, 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 you know, let's get on a call, offer some value, let's get on a call. And then I'd show up to the call. There was not, there was no touch point in between. And I was having the same problem that people just weren't showing up to those calls or they were showing up, but then the whole thing felt like a job interview where I was kind of proving myself to them. I right. said, so hang on a second. I'm basically having the same conversation every time I jump on these calls, you know, if they turn up, I'm just going through the same conversation where they're really screening me. This is not, I want to screen them. I know I can do the thing. They don't know I can do it because they don't know me well enough. So I just need to prove to them that I can do it before they get on the call. So just get that out of the way. Do it once, get it out of the way. And so then mm. that's when I started building in like another educational video between those touch points. And then giving them homework was, I thought was, you know, 
stroke of genius because you actually what 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 I'm trying to do what you're trying to do there is you're just trying to consume their attention right you're trying to stay top of mind as much as possible between touch points so and I know it sounds creepy but you want them to go to bed thinking about that homework you want them to wake up in the morning thinking about that video they just saw and thinking about that case study and trying to work through the worksheet because you you want them to pay attention to what you're talking about because I think the one of the biggest competitors we have as service providers and coaches and consultants is not other coaches and consultants, it's inaction. I think the biggest competitor we have is mm-hmm. our clients will just say, well, I'm just not going to do anything. I'm not going to go and hire someone else, but I'm not going to hire you. I'm just not going to do anything. Mm-hmm. And so I just want to try and keep them on the hook as much as possible in between touch points and just keep them paying attention and really kind of, you know, politely twisting the knife and letting them know that this is a problem that they need to solve and that it can be solved and I'm the right person to help them solve it. Totally right. Well, and you mentioned case study earlier, which I know is in your high ticket sales funnel. That's the homework is to watch a series of case study videos. For my clients, a lot of the homework, uh, uh, what they choose for homework a lot of times is a future me like homework assignment where someone has to sit down and answer a series of questions about like, what does future them look like after they've kind of gotten this result that they want with this coach. And so it's like really keeping that top of mind of this is the result that they can help me get. You know, I can lose 50 pounds or I can make a hundred K in my business or I can, you know, and, and so it's just awesome. Yeah. Love it. Hey, um, do you guys watching, would you like to see some of the high ticket sales funnels that Jenny has actually built? Would you like to see some of these in action? We have two, I have two lined up. One is a, uh, a weight loss coach. And the other, do we, you call it a weight loss coach or you call them weight coaches? Weight loss weight coaching. Loss coach. Yeah. And the other is a business coach. So just uh, leave us a comment. I'm going to get you guys to interact. Leave us a comment and just say, show me in the comments. And then we'll dive in and we'll have a look at uh, a couple of these funnels. Now, these are funnels that you have built for your clients who are coaches. Simon Clay yep. says, yes, please. <laughs> Carmen Lama says, yes. They're really bad at following instructions. I said, type show me into the comments and now they're typing all sorts of other things. But that's right, they do want to see it. Chad Sultana says, yes. Emily Bryan says, yes. Hey, Emily's in New Zealand and just had a baby about six weeks ago. Uh, good on you, Emily. I hope everything's going well. Mary Brown says, show me. Samuel says, yes, I'd like to see it. Heidi says, yes, please. Cool. Morgan O'Donnell says, show me. All right. I think we're going to dive in and have a look and uh, you can walk them. You can walk us through them, uh, Jenny. So you probably won't be able to see this right now, but what I'm doing now is I am sharing the, essentially the sign up page for Natalie Brown, mm-hmm. how to lose the first five pounds and keep going. And so what you'll see <clears throat> on the screen here is a video thumbnail, a headline, a sub headline, some bullet points and a button that says, watch the video. And regardless of whether I click on watch the video or whether I click on the video thumbnail, what happens is either of those options trigger a pop-up essentially, right? That says, Mm -hmm. hey, enter your name and email to get instant access to the video. So I put my name and my email address in. We're all familiar with how this works. And then I'm redirected to the video page where, which I'm not going to play right now, but I'm making an assumption in this video page that Natalie teaches one thing about weight loss, which is going to be super helpful, right? Yeah. She teaches them how to lose the first five pounds, which is like what they want, you know, how to get awesome. started. Perfect. Uh, then uh, underneath that video, it says step two, uh, check to see if you qualify. Uh, you click the button and you're then taken to an application page. Again, I'm not going to walk you through all the details here, but it basically is an application form that asks you some questions where Natalie is really kind of pre-screening you to see if you're a good fit and to see if she can actually help you, right? Mm-hmm. Because let's be clear about this. The best, way to, uh, the best way to be successful as a coach is to make sure you're working with people who you can actually help and who are coachable and who you can actually help transform, right? Totally. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Otherwise, you're just going to be, you know, pushing the proverbial uphill all the time. Um, Okay, so now we've applied, uh, we go through the application. We end up on uh, either a couple of uh, pages. We are, if we fail the application form, so we're, in other words, we're not a good fit based on Natalie's criteria, we end up on a page that basically says, look, sorry, it doesn't look like we're the right fit for each other. Based on the answers you've provided, we might not be a good fit. And here's why, if you think I've got this wrong, 
uh, get in touch and let me know. Otherwise, check out uh, my free video below, which you know is going to be helpful anyway, but we're probably not a good fit for each other. If you do make it through the application, you basically end up on a booking page where you can just see the availability in Natalie's calendar and you can just book in a time uh, for a weight loss strategy session. And then once you've booked in, you end up on the confirmation page, which is basically the homework page. It says, hey, preliminary assignment, please watch this short video for instructions about your call. And this is where Natalie will walk you through the homework before you get on the strategy call with her. And then mm -hmm. on the strategy call is where uh, you first get to meet Natalie and she kind of walks you through, talk to us a little bit about that call. What happens on that first call? Yeah, well, um, she's just talking to them about, she's really just asking them a lot of questions, honestly, <laughs> like leading them through. Every coach kind of has their unique process, but um, a lot of my clients will ask them like, they'll ask questions about different areas of their life, like, um, w and rate it. Like, what is your rating on a scale of one to 10 of your, your business, a scale of one to 10 of your physical, you know, well being, and just a series of questions like that. And the client will rate it and the coach will ask, okay, why? And then they get the client to kind of talk through, well, what it would look like if, if it were a 10. And so really just even more of that before and after of like what it can be like if, um, if they coach with them. Yeah. And so just really highlighting the, the, the distance between where they are now and where they want to be in the future and really future pacing that what that transformation is going to feel like and what their life is going to be like at the end of that transformation and then, and then positioning themselves and their framework and their coaching is the vehicle that's going to help them get there. Exactly. Love it. <clears throat> and ratings and scorecards are fantastic because you basically, we do the same thing. We have people fill in a scorecard before they turn up to their first call and then we go through the scorecard. If we remember, we go through the scorecard and they basically have self-identified where the areas that they need help. And so then the really the, the strategy session, which is you know kind of a sales call, that really just becomes tailored to that specific applicant based on what they need. So I might not need to talk to them about lead gen and getting clients because they might be absolutely full at the moment and their biggest problem might be hiring staff. So now I'm just going to talk to them about that and show them that we can help them with that particular thing because that's what's important to them. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. I'm going to dive in and uh, also we take a quick look now at Dave Marino. Um, it's funny because Dave's familiar to me in some way, I don't know why, but when I first saw that you'd worked with Dave, I know his name and I, I don't know where from, probably just from around the internet. Uh, but I love this funnel. I get the exact blueprint to six-figure growth this year. So Dave's a business coach by the sounds of it. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Cool. Learn the three simple steps to get there without the stress and the burnout and then some bullet points. And then again, video thumbnail or the button, yes, I want to know how, that kicks open a pop-up. We opt in for the case study. Uh, then uh, we go to Dave's video, which is, again, just a value video. Here's, you know, one thing. Uh, th now, just I'm just going to go a little bit deeper into this because the structure for this kind of content should be, whether it's a video or a blog post or, or whatever you're using, the structure for this should be, as Jenny mentioned before, something like, something along the lines of, you know, here's, here's, here's one thing that I can help you with and, and really go into painstaking detail about how this one thing works, but then revealing that this one thing is just part of a greater orchestra and you've really got to have the whole orchestra playing together to create a symphony. So now you know how to, to play the violin. I want to teach you how to play the trumpet and the timpani and the percussion and the woodwind and the brass section all at once and the piano so that you can create a symphony. And if you want to learn all of that other stuff as much as this that I've just taught you, then let's get on a call and see how we can work together. And so it really is just showing them that there's a, a larger puzzle that kind of fits together. Um, uh, so back to Dave's uh, funnel. So there we go. Uh, we then click on the apply button. Same, same process here. We uh, uh, go through the application uh, form. And uh, again, there's the not quite right page. Not quite a good fit, but uh, here you go. Here's some other free resources. Um, and if you are a good fit, then uh, let's schedule some time in the calendar. And again, once you've scheduled time in his calendar, you get the pre-call homework. There you go. What are your three big goals? Watch this video and learn the importance of documenting your three big goals and why this will be important during our upcoming discovery call. Fantastic. Awesome. Um, 
Now, you and I spoke when you were talking with Dave because we kind of were talking about, we kind of reframed the high ticket sales funnel into, we just changed the language into like an automated sales process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I want to, I want to talk a little bit about why automation is important for growth and scale. And I'm totally throwing you on the spot here. It's okay. I can handle it. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Uh, so, so some of these coaches, when they, when they come to you, what does their process look like if they don't have automation in place? Yeah. So one particular client that uh, not one of the high ticket sales funnels that you just showed, but another gal that I built one for, she was taking sales calls and then the client would fill out an intake form after they booked and she would read through it and manually turn them away if they weren't a good fit. Like if they obvi just very obviously were not coachable or, you know, were didn't have the investment or what have you. She would like manually send them an email and tell them she wasn't a good fit. And I was just like, oh, that is just, you know, you're like a five figure coach. <laughs> like this should not be, you should not be manually doing this. <laughs> yeah. So. That just seems like such a, a, a waste of resources. And, yes. uh, and I've, I've, you know, I, I, when we first started building the funnel, we were doing the similar thing. We didn't really know what we were doing. And so we had it all, you know, backwards. Uh, but it just seems like such a waste of time and waste of resources and potentially a really bad experience for the customer as well because they've booked in and now you're going to kind of cancel the appointment and that doesn't feel right. great. Yeah, it's twofold. It's automating saves you so much time because then you can spend more time creating your content and improving your craft as a coach. And it also helps to position you really well because you have a system in place that provides a really clean experience for the customer, for the client. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, hey, I want to open up to some questions here. You guys watching do now, some of you guys are coaches. Some of you guys are web designers, digital marketers who might be looking at building funnels for, uh, for coaches. Hey, Dave Marino's on the call. Hey, Dave, how you doing? We were just admiring your high ticket sales funnel, my friend. It looks absolutely beautiful. It is a work of art. And I actually watched your video too, man. And I'm super impressed. Uh, I, yeah, was, was very impressed with the whole experience. So uh, good to uh, Lara Johnson said, Dave Marino looks great. And Dave says, thanks, Lara. <laughs> I love it. Oh, fantastic. Um, so, hey, if you guys have got any questions, just let us know in the comments. If you've got any questions at all about building a high ticket sales funnel, about automating the sales and marketing process, about the benefits of doing something like this. This, this is, let me just also, let me just um, lay the, the groundwork here. This is not something that takes half an hour, right? There's a fair bit of work involved in putting together a high ticket sales funnel, not just building the actual pages and plugging in all the integrations and the automations and getting the user experience right, but also the content development, because I believe that a the success of your, your high ticket sales funnel really comes down to how compelling that video is that people are signing up mm -hmm. for. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> we, we're just, we're going through a process at the moment with Mavericks Club, which is our mastermind program. And we use a high ticket sales funnel uh, to sell that, um, except if you're Jenny, of course, and you just bypass that whole process and we just have a conversation on Messenger and you just join. Um, uh, so, you, you know, you don't always need to put th people through a funnel. If they already trust you enough, there's, you, you might not need to do it. Uh, but we, the high ticket sales funnel for us has worked really well for Mavericks Club. But now we're finding, like anything, you know, things change. The content is not converting as well as it used to so we're now actually going back and we're going to reshoot the video in our in the middle of our high ticket sales funnel to try and improve conversions uh, because the video that we're using is probably 15 months old and uh, frankly it probably should have been updated about six months ago uh, we just haven't gotten around to it so our um, our Facebook agency who is uh, um, uh, Kim Barrett from your social voice in Perth is also a Mavericks Club member uh, his team have just gone through our entire high ticket sales funnel and given us a whole bunch of feedback and we're making changes. So we're changing headlines, we're changing video content and it's been awesome to have someone else go through it and look at it objectively and go, huh, that's okay, but it could be better. Uh, Chad says, hey Jenny, do you sell this product as a high ticket sales funnel or a cool coach customer collector? <laughs> <laughs> Love it. I should, I should totally do that. <laughs> Love it. Well, we, and we've spoken about this too, haven't we? Like the, the, because 
you know, sometimes the reason that I call it a high ticket sales funnel in full transparency is because it's great at selling high ticket products so coaching fits perfectly there and it's a sales funnel it's designed to actually make sales and it's a funnel because it's a series of steps it's also called that because we were producing a course and and i knew that a course called high ticket sales funnel would sell really well but what it really is is an automated sales and marketing process to fill your calendar with high quality leads and then convert those leads into clients right yes and that's how i sell it is this is a sales process an automated sales process yeah Cool. Um, so questions, questions, questions. What I'm also going to do is let you guys know there's a couple of uh, options for you, right? First thing I'm going to do is give you this, wpelevation.com slash courses. If you're interested in the High Ticket Sales Funnel course, get on over to wpelevation.com slash courses and have a look at the High Ticket Sales Funnel page there. It'll give you all the information about that course. The other alternative is that if you just want to get this done, because the, the course is awesome, it's a little bit more of a uh, kind of a do-it-yourself model. If you want to just get this done, get on over to jennylakenan.com slash quick chat, that's quick hyphen chat, and book in for a call with Jenny, uh, and she can talk to you about your high ticket sales funnel and what your requirements are. Um, Andrea says, for sure, as a cool coach collector, I'm one of her coaches she built for, so naturally I'm cool. (laughs) Love it. And Dave's got a very interesting question here. Can you talk more, Dave Marino, can you talk more about how to use the funnel to sell groups versus one-on-one coaching? What's the difference? Oh, Dave. Dave, my friend, you are, I could sit here for weeks and talk about this. So, um, we use a high ticket sales funnel to sell group coaching. Our Mavericks Love Mastermind is a group coaching program. In fact, I don't do any one-on-one coaching at the moment. That might change, but I, at the moment I don't do any. And that's a lie. I've got one one-on-one coaching client who I've just taken on. <clears throat> and I'm having so much fun. I think I'm going to do some more one-on-one because it's just super fun. Anyway, the group coaching, it really nothing changes in the funnel, right? The only thing I would the only thing I would say is that the the uh, pitch part of the strategy session, when you start talking about the deliverables and what's included and what they get, really lean into the power of community because that's the real power in group coaching. There's two things. There's two reasons I love group coaching. One is you get leverage as a coach, so it's great for growing your business. But two, what's really in it for the the uh, members, and I'm talking, I mean, Jenny here is a member of our Mavericks Love Mastermind, right? What's really in it for them is that they actually get way more access to smart people without having to rely on the coach having availability in their calendar. I don't want to become the bottleneck for Jenny's growth, right? I don't want to be the thing that slows down Jenny growing her business because she can't access me because my calendar is full. So having group coaching. Yes, we do still get to spend some time together, but there are other coaches and there are plenty of other really smart members in the mastermind who, frankly, I learn from all the time. And Jenny gets to tap into that community and those resources, and it's not just all reliant on me. So the uh, the, the sales funnel itself doesn't change, Dave. It's really just the conversation piece at the end of the strategy session when we start talking about logistics, when the, when the, and, and if you're running these strategy sessions effectively, you'll just be asking lots of questions and then be flipping it and get the the person on the phone to start asking questions and kind of buy themselves into it by asking questions. And then when they start asking about logistics and how it works, you can really lean into the, the power of community. I hope that answers that question, Dave. Um, yeah, and I just had one to add to that too. Yeah. About six months ago, I built a high ticket sales funnel for a client who was doing one-to-one coaching. And then just in the last month or two, she pivoted to groups and she was like, what do we do? We have this huge funnel you built for me that does all these things for one-to-one coaching. And I told her, I was like, just calm down. We don't need to rebuild your whole funnel. It, that This is an asset for you that you can use forever. The only thing you need to update is that value video, that co- cornerstone content video. You just update it so that at the end, instead of you know talking about one-to-one coaching and calling to action on the call, it's group coaching. And she was like, oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> And there's, you know, the, the only pushback I've ever had from people when talking about group coaching is they have this mindset that the most valuable thing is, oh, I just, want, I just want time with you, man. I just want one-on-one time with you. I just want lots of one-on-one time with you. Mm-hmm. And I, I just really have to keep educating 
them that yes, I, absolutely. if you know, I will very fast, I will very quickly become the bottleneck to your business growth because I just won't be available, man. I mean, my wife's about to have a baby any day, right? I mean, it's this is fortuitous that this live stream happened. I actually went to bed last night and thought. There's every chance that she could go into labor in the middle of the night and I might just have to blow this whole thing off and Jenny might have to run it on her own or we might have to reschedule it. So that happens. I'm kind of off the grid for a couple of weeks. If we're one-on-one -on -one and you're relying on me to grow your business, then that's going to be a problem. So, Yeah, um, yeah. And educating about the power of community too, like you said, especially with like weight loss coaching and stuff. I mean, mm. it's so powerful yeah. to have the community. There's yeah. something about public... Um, declarations of intent so mm -hmm. accountability in maverick club is great because you so in maverick club we have our members in squadrons of like six to eight people our six to eight agencies and you declare to your squadron what it is you're going to get done in the next seven days and then we keep you know they keep you accountable in slack so publicly declaring what your intentions are uh, to a group it's very easy to pull the wool over a coach's eyes it's and it's very easy to kind of make excuses for not taking action. I have fired so many private one-on-one -on -one coaching clients years ago when I was doing one-on-one -on -one coaching because they just wouldn't take any action. I'm like, you're wasting your money and you're wasting my time. You're fired. Come back when you're ready. You put them in a group or you even introduce one more person into that relationship and everything changes because the mm -hmm. accountability stakes go up. And you can't pull the wool over two people's eyes at the same time because it's just, you know, it's tricky. A mm -hmm. um, couple of questions here. Eva Lim who is a WP Elevation alumni, says, what software or plugins did Jenny use to build the sales funnel? Well, we can't tell you all of our secrets, but we can tell you that, um, you know, I found out recently that Colonel Sanders' uh, 11 secret herbs and spices was just all spices. It's just all It's just like, you know, all spices. Like there are no 11 secret herbs and spices. You can go to the supermarket and buy all spices. It's the same thing, right? So we can't tell you all of our secret herbs and spices, but we, I, we can tell you this. It's built on WordPress which we can talk about in a moment, why it's built on WordPress. Uh, you use whatever page builder you like. I happen to love Elementor. We've also had people build mm -hmm. lots of funnels using Beaver Builder. doesn't matter. They do pretty much the same thing. Uh, and then, you know, the, in High Ticket Sales Funnel, we actually show you how to build the entire funnel using free plugins. You don't have to pay for anything. Mm -hmm. like WordPress is free, Elementor, free version. All the plugins we use in the High Ticket Sales Funnel course are free. Uh, and so it's really, you know, it, uh, that's not um, too difficult at all. And Carmen's got a question here. Before we come back and talk about Word WordPress, Carmen's got a question. Jenny, do you work with a copywriter? Oh, that's such a loaded question. I don't. Mm -hmm. I encourage my clients to write their own copy, and I've heard Marie Forleo say this too, and I kind of agree. Like, copywriting, <laughs> I had a client compare it the other day to birthing a baby. <laughs> She's like, it's... <laughs> So I feel like it's so hard to like produce all of this. But the thing about writing their own copy is that, especially as a coach, every time you're writing to a client is an opportunity to like engage them and inspire them, even if you're just writing like an email. So getting good at doing it is really helpful. And then, you know, if in the end you get good at it and you want to hire it out after you've gotten good at it, then... <laughs> <laughs> do it yeah. but that's kind of my stance on it i know it, it's a little bit controversial but all my clients write their own copy they yeah. do their own video scripting all of it yeah and i and i agree with you 100 percent. i think one of the most important skills you can have as a coach is being able to communicate effectively with your clients and motivate them to take the action they need to take whether you're motivating them to buy your program or whether you're motivating them to take action on the coaching that you're giving them uh and if you want a cheat sheet, the, the best book I've ever read for copywriting that just lays it all out and gives you some fantastic practical frameworks is Ray Edwards' Copy That Sells. Uh, Ray Edwards is one of the great copywriters who writes for a lot of the big online marketers. He's written a ton of stuff for Amy Porterfield over the years. Uh, he, he's, he's got a, a great program called Copywriting Academy. I think now he only, he only does kind of you know live retreats, live event retreats. Um, I've learned more from reading that one book than I've learned from all other copywriting resources combined. So I would definitely uh, recommend that book. And also try and get around the Agora Publishing stuff. Any, anything that Agora Publishing publish on copywriting, there's um, a guy named Michael Masterson who, who publishes some books around how to write leads and how to write headlines. Uh, just study copywriting and, and learn how to write good copy for your customers. Um, yeah, and then just write a lot of copy too. Like yeah. you can study 
And in the end, it's kind of just the bulk of doing it a lot and being willing. I just tell my clients, be willing to be bad at copywriting yeah. <laughs> because then you're, you're, you're practicing enough to get good at it, you know? Yeah. Dave Marino says, if you work with Jenny, you don't need a copywriter. You think you do, but as she takes you through her process, you see it's actually much better to do it yourself. There you go. You'd think we'd paid Dave to turn up here, wouldn't you? Hey? <laughs> we haven't. Um, uh, Lisa Dietrich Linton, I hope I've said your name right there, Lisa, says, High Ticket Sales Funnel course was great. It truly helped my clients. Awesome. Just going to bring that uh, URL back up on the screen there. WPElevation.com slash courses is where you go to check that out. And as I said, if you just want to get this done, if you're in a, if you, you know, you don't want to worry about the tech stuff, you don't want to worry about copywriting frameworks, you don't want to worry about having to, piece it all together and you just want to get it done and get your funnel launched, get on over to jennylakenan.com slash quick chat and book in uh, Jenny's calendar and jump on a quick call with her to see if you're a good fit and to see if she can help. Carmen Klammer says, this is an interesting question. Do you help them with keywords and SEO? Oh, that's a, that is a good question. I am of the opinion that SEO is really good for businesses that people Google for. And I just don't really think that people are Googling for a coach. Like maybe they are, but I think most of the time people don't, people want the solution that a coach offers, but they don't know about it as a, as a solution. So that's why running like Facebook ads, which is what most of my clients do is a lot more effective because yeah. then it's more like interrupt marketing. Like you're, you're interrupting their attention with your solution and piquing their interest. So yeah. I don't do, I don't mess with SEO. I make it SEO friendly, you know, so if someone Googles Dave Moreno coach, Dave pulls up first, right? But, yeah. um, but I don't think that having a really like in-depth SEO strategy with keywords is an, is an important place to. And, and I, this is a bit controversial, but I've got a bit of a theory. I reckon that if you Google a coach, you probably don't want to hire the coach that comes up in those search results. I just have a feeling, right, that... I don't know. Like, um, I, I agree. I think referral, word of mouth, and putting the message in front of people strategically, whether it's through you know Facebook ads or you know Instagram post or Facebook lives or whatever it is. Um, yeah, SEO is is important in the long run, playing the long game. But if you're not blogging on a regular basis and you're not you know you're not publishing regular content, SEO is going to be really hard. If you've just got a static funnel like this, which is like five or six pages and it's not being updated, SEO is going to be really difficult. You've got to be publishing regular content to really make the most of SEO. And it's the long game. SEO is definitely the long game. Um, and, you know, I know plenty of people that have built multiple seven figure a year businesses and have, you know, seven web pages and no SEO and no blog and no podcast. They just run ads and the ads convert through their funnel. So, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, it depends on what your long-term strategy is, yeah? Mm -hmm. We have spent years producing a, you know, enough content to sink the Titanic. And if I was starting out again, I wouldn't do that. If I was starting out again now, I would just get my funnel right first, run ads, make sure it was converting, make sure it was profitable, get, you know, get my business off the ground. Then you can start to think about, okay, because producing content requires resources. Producing a podcast requires resources. Producing a blog requires resources. You can't do it all on your own. And if you're a coach, you shouldn't be doing it. You should be coaching and you should be studying and getting better as a coach. So you're going to need someone to write the posts for you. You're going to need someone to produce your podcast. That all takes time and costs money. I don't think it's something that you need to do when you first start out. I think it's, you know, I think it's the long game. Uh, a couple of other questions here. <clears throat> Someone says, uh, can you say the name of the book again by Ray Edwards? Oh, yes, it is Copy That Sells. It's a fantastic book by Ray Edwards. He's also, in that book, um, he's got a call to action to go and do a free course that he's got, which is a like a complimentary course that he's got, um, and a free Facebook group that he's got, which is awesome. His free Facebook group's amazing. I've learned so much from, um, from studying with uh, Ray. Um, okay, just going to bring these URLs up on the screen again. WPElevation.com slash courses is where you go if you want to learn how to build your own high-ticket sales funnel or if you want to sell high-ticket sales funnels to clients like Jenny does, uh, that is definitely the place to go if you want to do it yourself. If you are a coach or you want to partner with Jenny to get some high-ticket sales funnels built um, or you're a coach and you want to get your high-ticket sales funnel done, then get on over to JennyLakenan.com slash quick chat and book in a time in Jenny's calendar uh, to have a conversation. Uh, any, f any final thoughts, Jenny, that you've got any, any other 
nuggets of wisdom that you'd like to impart? Anything that we've missed? I don't think so. Were you going to talk more about WordPress or did we cover that? Oh, already? yeah, WordPress. So, um, <laughs> so I used to have this conversation on a daily basis. I now have it on an hourly basis pretty much with people who email me and ask me questions in various groups and support channels. Why would you use WordPress for something like this and not just use something like ClickFunnels or lead pages or, you know, Kartra or Kajabi or whatever those other hosted platforms are? Why would you suggest to use WordPress? I mean, I just like it because I can do whatever I want, whenever I want, with the look and feel, with the functionality, with all of it. And so, and I'm kind of spoiled like that. I like being able to do that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and the thing with those, What about you? Well, because, so, you know, those, it, it, I, for me, WordPress is all about the flexibility and the control that you've got. If you were to do something like this on ClickFunnels, technically you could do it. Um, you just don't have as much control because if they're, if the feature that you want isn't baked into ClickFunnels, then you can't do it and you have to wait for them to release that feature, which is likely not going to happen. So because WordPress has um, a, a plugin uh, architecture, because WordPress has, you know, 36,000 free plugins available in the plugin repository, uh, then you've just got full flexibility and control over doing whatever you want to do. And mm -hmm. with the particularly with the advent of page builders over the last couple of years, like Beaver Builder were really the first to, to really blow that scene up. And then Elementor came in and just completely reinvented WordPress as far as I'm concerned. There's yeah. just, I mean, if you can use the page builder in ClickFunnels, you can use the page builder in, in Elementor. So um, for me, there's no reason to not use WordPress. Uh, it just gives you flexibility. Now, there is a learning curve like anything. There, absolutely, there is a learning curve. Um uh, Darren, uh, Darren Sunken here says better to own it versus rent it. Yep, if you're using WordPress and you're hosting it on your domain, then you own all the data, you own that asset, You can it's yours, mm -hmm. no one can take it away from you. Mitch Britt says with WordPress, you determine the four walls and get to determine your growth. Yep, uh, mm -hmm. that's right. You know, I mean, if you end up using something like ClickFunnels and you want to then use their email automation, you're going to be, you know, you're just paying more and more and more as your plan upgrades. So with WordPress, you've got, full flexibility, full control, scalability. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's cleaner. Like I've had clients hire me just to move all of their lead pages, pages over to the WordPress website. So it was all in house, all in one place. Yeah. It's just cleaner. Yeah. Dave had a landing page funnel on MailChimp and Jenny has just moved it from MailChimp to WordPress and it's mm -hmm. night and day. It's so much more customized to my look and feel. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Because you know, the, that that's the beauty of using something like WordPress. Now, again, having said that, uh, it, there is a learning curve. So if you've never used WordPress before, it is going to take you a little while to get your, head around, get your head around it. If you want to do this yourself, go and have a look at the High Ticket Sales Funnel course. If you just want to work with someone and get it done, get on over to jennylackinen.com slash quick chat and book in her calendar to get it done. Uh, cool. So I think, you know, I think we've covered just about everything that we wanted to cover. I reckon, you know, and I can't think of anything that we've missed really. I will just reiterate that the success of a sales funnel in my opinion comes down to two things one the the quality of your content in the middle of that funnel that people are signing up to watch and how consistent the experience is from the first landing page right through the emails that people receive the booking page the confirmation pages how consistent that experience is will determine how well you build trust with your prospect before you get on a call with them and you know you've done a good job when people turn up for their call and they're like, because in our business now, I don't run all of the calls. In fact, I probably only run you know 10% of the calls. Um, Pete and Greg and Simon run the other calls. And so when someone turns up and they happen to get on a call with me, they're like, oh my God, I can't believe, I, I can't believe I'm on a call with Troy. Now that's very humbling, but what it shows me is that our marketing is working, right? People already see me as the authority before they turn up on a call. That's when you know you're doing a good job. Yep. Now, also, Jenny, in the interest of complete transparency, you don't have your own funnel built yet, do you? I don't. <laughs> People tease me about this all the time. I'm like, man, I am too busy building these for clients. Like, I don't got a time to build my own, <laughs> which is a lie. I could make time, but I uh... don't. Fantastic. I love it. I love it. Uh, it's like the mechanic with the broken down car in the front yard, right? <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, Emily Bryant says, loved my call with you, Troy. Thank you, Emily. I loved my call with you too. Emily was literally about to have a baby when I had my call with her. So, And she's now had that baby and everything's going really well. So that's fantastic. And Heather Frazier says, Jenny suggests that you write your own copy. At least that's what she told me. She just finished my site and I love it. Isn't that great to get that kind of feedback from clients? Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Cool. All right. Well, hey, uh, Jenny Lakin, and thank you so much for joining us on the live stream here. We've been here for 55 minutes. I am going to let you go. Uh, I think this has been um, super helpful. Again, uh, wpelevation.com slash courses is where you can check out the High Ticket Sales Funnel course. And if you want to work with Jenny uh, on your funnel, jennylakinen.com slash quick chat. Um, particularly good if you're in the coaching business and you want to automate your sales and marketing and fill your calendar with high quality leads and have great scripts to be able to turn them into high paying clients then get on over to Jenny's calendar, book in and have a quick chat with Jenny. Hey Jenny, this has been awesome. Thanks so much for being a part of it and uh, have a great day. Thanks, Troy. Thanks, Jenny. Bye now. Bye.